Hello, um, in this video we'll talk about capacitors and inductors in steady state uh, in DC circuits. So what we have is a, a capacitor or an inductor connected in a circuit with a, a source providing a constant voltage or a constant current. And we have a capacitor and we know it is under steady state conditions. Um, the current flowing through it is zero. So we basically say it behaves like an open circuit. So every time we have a circuit and we know for sure that the capacitor is uh, or, or that it has reached steady state, we can just replace it with an open circuit. There will be a voltage between its terminals, but there will not be a current flowing through it. In the case of an inductor, and we have an inductor and let's say we have an, a current flowing through it and there's a difference or a voltage between its terminals, when an inductor is in a steady state, we say that the voltage between its terminals is zero. So the inductor behaves like a short circuit. There will be a current flowing through it, but there will not be a voltage between its terminals. It's going to be zero. So it basically behaves just like a like a wire. In DC circuit, we have a capacitor. It's just an open circuit in a steady state. No current. So it's just an open circuit, and uh, there will be a voltage there, but no current. And the inductor, we're going to have a current flowing there. It's a short circuit, but there won't be any voltage between its terminals, so it behaves like a wire. Okay, no voltage. So now let's see, let's see an example. Let's consider we have a circuit like that, and we know C and L, the capacitor and inductor, are already in a steady state. We want to find the current flowing through the inductor and the voltage between the terminals of the capacitor. Again, both of them are in steady state. We also want to find the total energy in the inductor and the total energy in the capacitor. So, since we know that the inductor and the capacitor are in steady state, we can simplify the circuit using the rules uh, we mentioned before. We have a capacitor that is in a steady state, so it behaves like a, an open circuit. And we have an inductor in a steady state, so it behaves like a short circuit. So we can redraw the circuit but remove all inductors and all capacitors from the circuit. We replace the inductor with a short circuit. Here we have the 1 ohm resistor. And now we replace the capacitor with an open circuit. So it's open here. That's the capacitor. And here we can measure the voltage between the terminals of C. And now we have replaced the inductor with a short circuit. So the current flowing through it is flowing there, IL. So we're going to find IL and VC. In this case, we only have this one, one loop. And we know the current is one amp, uh, so we can we can easily find the current. IL is just one amp, it's given by the source. In VC, in this case, uh, the voltage between the terminals of C in steady state uh, is the same voltage between the terminals of the resistance. So we get here one ohm times one amp and we get one volt. So that's the voltage, uh, the value of the voltage through C under steady state conditions and that's the value of the current flowing through L under steady state conditions. Now we can easily find the, the energy stored in the capacitor. That's one, 1 over 2 times the capacitance times the voltage squared. In this case is one half of C, that's two micro, times the voltage squared is just one square. So we get one microjoule. And similarly for the inductor, we can calculate the energy in L. One over two times the inductance. 1 over 2 times L and then times the current square. So in this case we have 1 over 2 times 1 milli 
times the current square, in this case it's just one amp square, so we get 0.5 millijoules. We can also find the total energy stored in the circuit in a steady state. Let's say WT. And that is, in this case, just a summation of WC plus WL. Okay, one micro plus 0.5 millijoules. Let's see another example, a little bit more complex. Now we have two sources and, and more resistors. Um, we're assuming again steady state conditions, and we want to find the energy stored in the capacitor and the energy in the inductor. So again, we know they are in a steady state. So we can simplify the circuit by replacing the capacitor with an open circuit and replacing the inductor with a short circuit. So see it's an open circuit, L is a short circuit under steady state conditions. So we can redraw the circuit again. Here we have the open circuit replacing the capacitor. here is open and now we put a short circuit here replacing uh, the inductor and here we have the one volt source and we're looking for the voltage here that's the voltage between the terminals of C and that's the current the current IL the current flowing through the inductor Okay, and with those two values, we're going to find the energy stored in C and the energy stored in L. So let's find IL. We basically have here two loops. Uh, let's let's uh, we're going to use KVL in in this loop over here. This, I'm going to call this loop two. And then we have this. The other big one here is that one is loop one. So if we write uh, the KVL equation for loop 2, this is what we get. We have 1 volt, and that voltage is being dropped across 5. So 1 volt has to be equal to 5 times, in this case, I1 plus I2. Both currents have the same direction through 5 ohm resistor. But I1 and I2 is basically IL. I1 plus I2 is the same current flowing through the inductor. So from this equation we can directly find uh, IL. 1 has to be equal to 5 times IL and from there we find IL is equal to 0.2 amps. And that's it. That's the value of the current for the inductor when it is in a steady state. Now, we want to find the voltage of DC. Now this, this might be a little bit tricky here. So to find VC, what we do is we have to find the voltage between these two points. So from this point here, and that point there. So we need to basically choose a path to go from one point to the other, adding or subtracting the voltages that we find along the way. So we can basically choose that path, uh, choosing the one volt source, or choosing the other path, let's say following the, the, the current source. The problem with that path is that we actually don't know the voltage between the terminals of one amp. So we, we try to avoid that. We want to use the other one, the other path, the path across or along the, the, the one volt source. So we're going to start here and we're going to go all the way to this node because we know that from there to there we have one volt. And then we're going to consider the drop across five. So to find VC we have one volt that's uh, given by the source from minus to plus and we're saying that's positive and now we have to consider the drop across 5 we need to define the polarity first we have one amp flowing there 
So now we have from minus to plus, we got one, and here from minus to plus again, we have to add the voltage between the terminals of five. That is five ohms times one amp, because we have one amp flowing through five. So we get six volts. We add the both uh, we add both voltages because they both have the same polarity. So finally, now that we get the voltage across C and the current through through the inductor, we can just find the total energy there. So we have one half of C, one half of one micro times the voltage square, and we get zero. 0.018 millijoules. We can find the energy for the inductor as well. So WL is going to be one half of L. L is one milli times the current is 0.2 square. So we get 0.02 millijoules. So that's the energy in the inductor. We can find the total energy in the circuit just by adding WC plus WL. And the value we get is 0 0.038 millijoules.